Lesson. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now then, as fishermen, we seem to be obsessed by weights. Weights and numbers. Oh, 50th marlin. Ah, oh, 647 pound blue marlin. 250th marlin, it weighed 395 pounds for precious. 367 pound black marlin. There's a rack of them over there, sixes and fives and everything like that. So we seem to be obsessed with numbers. Do you know, why is that? Why are we obsessed with weights? Now, one thing I will say is, these were eaten, these fish. I didn't kill them, the boats killed them, the skippers. Take them in, use them for food, and I'll have the bills if they're gonna throw the bills away, which they invariably do. That's how I got these. But what I'm trying to say to you is, I know exactly what those fish weighed. They were put on scales, so we know exactly what those fish weighed. Now then, it followed on from the early bill fishing, let's say, I suppose it was the early 80s, where they used to kill a little marlin, and then they stopped killing them for aesthetic reasons, I guess. You know, we can't keep killing them if you, if you don't want to eat them. There's no reason to, they're great sport fish. And I'd agree, I've got them here, but now let them go. However, they came up with a weight for length formula that was supposedly very accurate. Now, a lot of people are tagged onto this now. Weight for length, oh, we know what that shark weighs. And I always think, do you know what? Those weight for length tables don't work. You can't have something for all different species. Now, my argument being is, let's say I'm 10 and a half stone, okay? If I go and eat my big roast dinner, I might be a few pounds more. Yet if you measure me with weight, length and girth and use that same formula, my stomach doesn't suddenly expand out, does it? To give me a, an increase of that food inside. So the density inside is not taken account of. Therefore, I don't think those weights and length formulas work at all. They might be nice to say I caught a 260 pound blue shark or whatever. We haven't caught a 260 pound blue shark until you hang it up, which a lot of people are not prepared to do, and I quite agree. It's the way forward. So I thought, right, I'm gonna check these formulas out and see if they really do work, because I never thought they did in the first place. So what exactly is an average type of fish? Well, I can only speak for British fish, and I thought, one I should start with, really, is a pike. Because it's a predator, I like pike fishing here at Totally Awesome. We definitely love our pike fishing, be it on baits or lures or whatever it is. So I thought, out we go. Let's go to a pike lake, a little known pike lake, incidentally. In fact, it's not even a pike lake, really. See if I can catch something, and I want to take some weights and measurements. Then we're going to come back home, and hopefully, if we catch one or two, we can work the formulas out, and having weighed those fish, actually see if it holds any water. Does that make sense? Let's get fishing. But day ticket fishery with a difference, because the pike here are allegedly growing very, very big. Now, I had the chance to fish here every year for about six years, and I've never taken a gentleman's offer up to come and have a day's fishing here. So I have got a day with no wind. It's flat calm, it's beautiful. It's actually stopped raining, the water's flooded, but being as it's spring fed and it's chalk, it's clear. And that's my main reason for coming because nowhere else in the UK I can really go other than a sort of chalk based river that's not going to be flooded. I'm going to give it a shot and just see if that weight for length measurement is any different here in a chalk spring fed place, you know, with the pike at a constant temperature and a constant supply of food. Let's hope there's a constantly big pike out there waiting for me. Okay people, I'm going to be using float fish dead baits on this one. A couple of fixed ball reels there. 12 pound line minimum. Floats bottom end only. A bead, a stop knot further up the line to set my depth. So I'm not really worried, I'm not, to be honest here, I'm not really worried. It's so slick and so flat, whether the float cocks or not, I'm not really bothered. I'm going to see it move. And quite a small one there, which will probably, it might even get pulled under, might not even be big enough for the weight of a mackerel. Not to worry, I shall be twitching them as 
per hour. Other films are going to cast it out and probably twitch it, bump it, move it, and alternate from one rod to the other. And I've got here, people always ask, I've got a Mar Ryobi Master Party 2. No, I don't sell them, I don't even think you buy them now. And the other one I think is a Wanderer, one of the old John Wilson Wanderers, and I use them for piking and lure fishing, dead bait twitching all the time. Got no live baits, unfortunately, they tell me live baits, you know, are the norm here, the better catchers. I'm going to have to make do with all those baits I've got. <sighs> Certainly got a selection of dead baits. Let's hope we catch at least one pike and get it measured up. Obviously I'm using some of my favourite baits, sprats, but they're out of season. So I had a few sprats left in the freezer, I had to use those, and I've got sardines there. Bit soft to use for baits, but they're still good. Followed up with some of my favourite shark baits. Mackerel, I had some whole mackerel there because there could be some big pike, maybe 30 in there. And of course, if there's rainbow trout in the water, what would the pike be eating? Yes, rainbow trout. I decided to do the float fishing, but with the edge. Maybe you've seen our other film, float fish and twitching at the same time. Well, I double up here because the float gives you the visual aspect, but I can also just drop it into a buzzer, an electronic bite alarm, open the bait alarm, or if you've got a bait runner, you can put the bait runner on, and I used a little run clip there as well. So that's all I did was, you know, the float, the shot right down by the sprat, heave it out there, and then I could just twitch it back as and when I wanted. I could let that bait sit there if I wanted for a while. Now look at this for a take, guys. There is what you would think. Anybody would say, that is a pike take. You can see them crunching and dragging on the bait there, bobbing up and down, but hang on. He doesn't really pull it under. And then he goes flat. So what's that all about? There were some right peculiar takes there, I can tell you. That was on the sprat, and that was, yes, a totally different fish for me to catch. Give him a bit of time, let him eat it, you'd think, and then whack him, but hang on, it still hadn't pulled that float under the water. Oh dear, it appears there was nothing on the end after all that tugging and pulling. Oh, I just had a take, guys. I'll wind down, I'll whack it. Oh, right in the snag. What the heck is it? I don't think this one's a pike. I don't think it's a pike, but it's got me right in the trees. I have to go and get him. No, I got him out, I got him out, people. Put him out. Maybe it's a perch. No, it's a rainbow trout. This does not happen very often, guys. A rainbow trout on a wire trace and a twitch sprat. Nice fish, though, but he's got to go back because it's not what I'm after. Mine's a jumping pike, guys. <laughs> you can see that rainbows are going to be a problem here. I can see it. Quick show to the camera. And he's got to go back. Trout two, pike nil. And the other float's gone as well. Look what they do. Look what these rainbows do. They just chew the soft stuff out of it. Now you think, for, well, it just looks like pike, but it's not. I think it's rainbows that have overwintered here and are mullering my sprats. There are little teeth marks there though, but just not those slicing cuts of a pike. I'll keep persevering.
Well guys, the only other angler here, after that second rainbow, I must have had 10 takes and lost 10 spats. So I'm gonna, well, it's exactly what he said, the other angler, he's roach fishing, trying to catch live bait. When I first turned up, he said, oh, you've got to catch some live bait. I said, well, I've got plenty of sea baits. No, sea baits are no good, he said, because the, they've got some wild overwinter browns and rainbows left over in here, and they muller everything. Shred it, chew it up, like piranhas. That can't be right, that can't be true. It's true. Anyhow, I don't know how I'm gonna work my way through them. The only way I can think of getting through them is an animal mackerel. Now, I've already had one cast of that, and believe it or not, there was a huge swirl just after I twitched it. Now, I don't know whether it was a big rainbow or was it a pike, I don't know. I've got one sprat out, but if I get many more tastes of rainbows, I'm gonna have to can that one and just go to big baits. So, out goes Mr. Mackerel. Probably killed three trout, hitting them on the head with that. I'm still going to do the same principle, twitching it every so often. I'll just go between the two and try to work my way along the bank. But I really fancy this end down here, it's shallow, because I'm looking at the fact that, okay, I know with most of the trout are going to be stocked when it is in season, and that's up there. So you think, are the pike going to be up there? Well, hang on, I'm making this sort of mid, mid, -end, mid end February, middle of February. We've had terrible floods. But you have to ask yourself, are those mild spells, have they kicked the pike into spawning gear, which means they're generally, generally in the shallows. So my hunch was to come down here in the shallows and that paid off big time for more rainbow trout. So I can do no more now than leap, leapfrog my way around, alternating the rods, casting out twitch, twitch, twitch all the time, and just see if I can get a take. There's one deep hole up there um, where I first came in that might be the only place, maybe I don't expect I'm going to get away from the drought, but I want to put, you know, one of the baits in front of a pike. Persevere. Now people, that whole mackerel is just laying on the bottom out there. I've over... Uh, depth of float and I was, I'm going to give it a twitch every, every so often but literally while I was doing that bit of filming that float started twitching now is that a pike that's picked the bait up it's not moved at all I think not do you know what I think these tra these trout in here the rainbows and the browns I honestly think they're bumping that whole one pound mackerel there <laughs> Okay, people, that's the take I'm getting right in close on a sprat. That is a take there, but you'd think that was a pike, wouldn't you? It's not. That is the take of a rainbow trout. Away he goes, and I doubt I'll hook it very much at all. He's moving off with it. See, they take it, just spit it out and drop it. I'll try and get the camera on that one for you. Just like a pike, but it's just See those twitches, those, those sort of twitches on the float, that just tells me it's not a pike. A pike generally gives four or five twitches, boom, under the float goes and it's away nice and slowly. Now look, see that's too sharp, that's too fast. I know, I know it's a, probably a two or three pound rainbow trout that's picking up and blowing that sprat out all the time. We might even have had the bait off. Now well, guys, look. Completely stripped. We'll try that again and see if it is a pike or not, but I'm pretty sure it's another trout. Well, I've been doing this twitching both rods, both floats for about four hours. I've discovered one thing. The trout don't seem to eat trout. The trout eat absolutely everything else I put in the water. I even had a mackerel, a whole one pound mackerel, almost skeletized. I'm going to call it skeletized because that's all got its head and skeleton back. I mean, I know they're predatory. I know they're predatory trout but not to this degree. And I'd imagine it's because there's so many roach and rud fry in here about this size, that during the winter, they've got no choice but to feed on them. That's, that's, that's what it is, so they're used to fish baits. I guess that's what it is. But one thing, I cannot find the legend of the lake. At the moment, it still remains the legend.
Well, people, the legend of the lake is safe again. But it gets sort of worse. I've had so many trout takes. I came right around the other side, just close in. They tell me the fishery now shuts at three, so that's a bit short time, but there you go, that's the fishery rules. I get a take close in, just from letting out. Oh no, another rainbow trout. Yes, that's right. I pull up hard like this. Up it comes, up it comes, up it comes. Yeah, damn, it's a pike, about six, seven pounds. Got a hold of the back end of the sardine, thrash it on the surface, spat the bait out, it's gone. So I did hook a pike here. It wasn't the legend of the lake. Or was it? It did get away. So, I feel I need another day's fishing. Yes, good excuse. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? to this channel for more awesome videos. Well, I've come down for my uh, my session to try and catch you a pike at short notice. And who's down here? But Nathan Brotherton, Nathan's a lure specialist, pike lure specialist. Any of you seen our uh, Totally Awesome Fishing Show know he did a uh, talk on lures. I think it's over 100,000 views he's had on his lures. But Nathan has been away in um, Thailand and uh, had a bit of an accident over there, Nathan, so I'm going to go down and give him an interview because we both had the same accident. Right, Nathan, you were uh, over in Thailand, I understand? Yeah, yeah, I was working out there as an angling guide for a little bit and uh, unfortunately I had a little bit of an incident with stingray. There was uh, a couple of species in there, a big, a big species and uh, with no barbs on him and a smaller one with barbs on him. And uh, I messed up the species a little bit, put my hand down to grab his tail and uh, Fortunately, you give me a little bit of a whack. Wow, that's that is really. Now this is just literally what, two, two, three months ago. Uh, yeah, this happened on the 12th of December, and uh, it's pretty much only just. So, so over. tell us what exactly happened. Did they stitch it or what? Well, basically, is in you can see there the two puncture wounds where the uh, the spine went in the barb, but uh, basically they stitched it up, so they trapped a lot of the bad bacteria in there, and uh, after a couple of weeks, it just literally just burst out with a load of black dead tissue, and they had to cut away all that, and then. Yeah, it turned it into quite a nasty star. I'll certainly yeah. remember that. Well, mine's not that bad. Mine's not that bad. Yeah, I got mine was in the, right in the in the edge of my foot by my ankle was with a 50, 60 pound stingray, and it went in this excruciating pain when you first get it. I'd say it's almost like the shot was like being hit with a piece of wood or, or like a hammer. You know, it's yeah, bang. Yeah. It's, it's not like a pinpoint pain. It was you know it was a it doesn't bang. Doesn't feel like a cut. It just feels like you've been punched in the arm. Exactly. It's yeah. just a, it's, it's a weird bang. Um, but we're about nine miles out to sea and had to come back obviously, and, uh, and get it sorted at the hospital, but I was lucky in as much as the American surgeon there said he wouldn't stitch my foot up just in case it goes bad inside because you could lose your leg. That sort of uh, swayed it my way, but that's exactly what they did with yours then, Nathan, was it? Yeah, they, that's exactly they, what they, they did. They shouldn't have stitched it up then, really. No, no, if they, if they left it open, then hopefully a lot of the rubbish should have sort of uh, come out of it. But, uh, but no, it was all trapped inside and everything looked all right until a couple of weeks and it just burst out. Nasty, nasty job, nasty job. But you'll hear the same as me, Trying to get away from this awful English weather. We, well, you, you should, you should have stayed. Today. You should have stayed in Thailand. There's no question of that. But know, uh, yeah. you've had a good pike out, haven't you? Anyway, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, that was a nice pike from here. Uh, fishing on the baits, like uh, twenty yeah. pounds six ounces. Oh, so nice was, fish. Uh, yeah, I was well yeah. chuffed with it. Yeah. Uh, dead baits, live baits. Uh, on, on a, a dead... nice live bait. <laughs> oh, that was a bait, live bait. Yeah, that's what they like, isn't it? Well, but... it's one of them. Give them what they want. Match that's the hatch, so to speak. Yeah. And have you uh, done much lure fishing? You know. Um, I haven't done as much as I usually do, but I had a little evening on here the other week and yes. uh, I had three nice pike up to, well, just sort of nice sort of jack pike. Yeah. Um, just on the on the soft baits. Any particular lures? You got any new lures that um, we can have a look at? Yeah, I've got a few lures with me. Let's go and let's check out Nathan's box because you always got something interesting in that tackle box there is. Well, the lure off that on, unfortunately, uh, it needs to be sort of repaired again because uh, the tail's bust on it. So that's what I was catching oh, them you've on. got a bucket of them there. Let's, let's check the bucket out first, guys. Now let's get in there. God, it's like a like a fishing car boot shop, that one, doesn't it? Certainly plenty of metal in there, but uh, that's what he 
that's what a pike, when I lent it to my mate, did to it. So, um, oh, cut it straight in two. Yeah, but a little bit of a, a lighter touched up to there. I should be able to repair that and be back catching more pike. Got a couple others to repair as well. Yeah. I oh, see so you've got a lot of green in there, and Nathan, is that uh, telling me something that I should be doing with, with green regard seems to colour? to be a very good colour for pike. I don't know why, but I mean, especially with these, I've done very well for some big pike on them. That's a pretty jumbo lures. I have seen bigger, but you know, for me, that one in in, in your hand here, that's a bit, that's a that's a big old lump to cost well, a long way to. It's one of them when you think about it. He's only an eight ounce roach, and you certainly have no problems using eight ounce roaches bait. That's true. That's true. Dead bait or big herring or something like that. Exactly, it's not, it's yeah, not even yeah. a big herring size, is it? No, no. So it's one of them. That's what they're feeding on. Definitely green. Definitely green. And that's a jumbo one there. Two rainbow trout one. Yeah. Well, as you can see from that one. He's that's been hit a few times. Yeah, that certainly caught me a few pike. That the one owns be nothing now. On this one as well. Rainbow trout co colour. Do they can you get those in like sort of chub and dace colours, those rubber ones? Do um, they do do they do a naturalised yeah, coarse well, colour? It's it's obviously the American sort of lures, so um they're fish which looks a lot like a roach they call shiners. Oh um, I know the shiner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of all those it would be coming in a, in a shiner pattern, but it's basically just a roach pattern really. Yeah, it'd be good to have something natural to uh, you know the yeah. just what you were saying just now about matching the hatch is what it's about really at the end of the day. I mean if well, you could get quite one like that the shape patterns. Yes, yes, that would be a good perch one, yeah, because it's got stripy colours down yeah, the edge exactly. of it. Perch patterns are really good for pike. Unfortunately, I did have quite a nice one which I caught loads of pike on, but that's now in the in a river somewhere. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh well, can't get them anymore. But that's another good one there as well. Perch pattern. Again, you still got that hint of green in there, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they definitely seem to like it. Right, let's uh, fingers crossed see if we can't pick something up here and at least get one that I can weigh and tape measure up and see if those weight for length measurements actually do pan out. Yeah, I've been a little bit slower today than normally. Well, I tell you what, I was only just only just comparing stingrays damage that we had with Nathan there just now. I suddenly looked up and there was a little bump on the float and it looks like we might have a take already. Just check with drag. There's a fish of some description. I don't think it's a big one. But I tell you what, with all these floods we've been having. No, it's a small fish, <laughs> but it's a pike of, of some description. Let's see if he stays on. Yeah, it's a nice one, that's a nice one. Let's see the sardines, hey. There he is, in the water. You can see the sardine just hanging out, just outside his jaws there. Right. Oh, he's not done yet. Gonna lift this one in. People say, why is he gonna lift that one in? Well you've seen a lot of films where people do lift them in. I don't like lifting them in, and I'll tell you for why. It's that other loose hook there. But there we go, there's the bait. Get the fish up here and he's out. Let's get it on the mat. That's a nice pike. That's a nice pike. But what I'm gonna do is what I said earlier, we're gonna weigh him. And then I'm going to do a weight for length taping of it, and I can compare it when I get home. Let's get it on the mat. Now Nathan's going to do us the honours here. I'm just using a VB hook on the top, it's just my, my, my twitching rig. That's a nice little fish. And he got some nice markings there too, Nathan, oh, that one. Got a nice fat belly, so we're feeding on a few ropes at the moment. Do you reckon that's what he's been having in here? Yeah, definitely I reckon. That's a nice belly. What a fat little pike. Right, before the rain comes, I'll pop him in the uh, in the net and I'm gonna get my scales organized. So you're just zeroing the scales there, Nathan? Yeah. After you've wetted it. I'm gonna take a glance at that and say, seven pounds 12, what do you think? Any advance on seven pound 12? Six pound four. Right. I'm going to zoom in there. Oh. <laughs> it's certainly bigger than that. I thought it was a lot of your It says one pound two. I think I think we might reevaluate the scales here. <laughs> yeah. I've got, I've got some scales. Oh, yeah. 
There you go, six pounds seven, so five ounce. Six pound two, so it wasn't far off two. there, was I? Six pound two. Two oh. ounces off. Okie doke, and we just tape measure that one before we put him back, and then I can do the weight for length. Six pound two. In inches? Yeah, in inches. Then we can uh, get it converted. So we do nose to the fork of the tail. Don't get bitten. <laughs> Stingrays enough. <laughs> 30. 26 and a half inches. Okay, 26 and a half. And we just do a girth around here. Yeah. Hopefully you go around that, just in front of the door. So you go around the widest part of the body. Yeah. That's it. Go up there, Nathan, right across that, that, that wide part there. Whoa, whoa, calm down, Nitty. Cover his eyes, keeps him quiet. 13. 26 and a half and 13. There we go. Okay, hope you can remember those. We'll write them down and get it straight back. And of course, get that bait out there again. Good job, thanks Nathan. Off he goes. Hold off, first one. Two. Four. Yeah, you bang on right. Four pound two. Four pound, four pound two. We, five ounce for the, we take the five sleep. ounces off, yeah? Four pound two, and if we can measure that one and uh, do weight for length on that. Oh, you got another nick there, Nathan. Oh, sorry. Ah, I'd be alright. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> we're in competition now. We've got a stingray each, and you're leading, you're leading with one bloodied finger. Bit of rake rash. I hope not to make an equaliser. <laughs> Okay, 20, 23. 23, and we do a we go, do a girth right around the fattest part of him. Hopefully he lays still. Nine and a half. 23, nine and a half, back in the water. Lead than the other one. But narrow there, isn't he? Yeah, he's not got a lot in him. He's definitely just coming back on the feed. Need some more ropes down him. Yeah. 23, nine and a half. Let's pop him back. Well, this is usually quite a good spot for the pike, but they don't seem to be here at the moment. But um, I think the reason why they like it in this core is because you've got quite a deep hole there, but you've got a slope coming up to some of the shallowest water in the lake. And also, this corner, it gets the sun in the morning. And I think what they do is, because quite often they'll see on like a sunny day, they'll be lying up along the shallow bank. And I think the reason is, is because the water will be sort of like one or two degree warmer. And for a pike, when he's, uh, because they are eating such a big meal, it's quite, it takes quite a while for them to digest it. So I think they lie up in the warm water just to sort of aid digestion. I mean, whether that is true or not, I don't know, but it's just my little theory about it. Yeah, that's what you need to be thinking outside the box all the mm. time for extra tips, don't you, really? Yeah, Something like yeah. that, to make people think of different areas. I mean, quite often when I do see them lying up here, you can put a bait in front of them and stuff, and they're not interested, and I think it's because they're full. But, I mean, if you catch them just before they're about to feed, then, you know, just before they move off into the deeper areas. Well, that's the difference with clear water, um, possibly like, let's say like those big places, Chew and all the top reservoirs mm. where the big ones come from, they're, they're on a real high protein diet there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, like you say, it's going to take time to digest those. And I think a lot of the time they're going to be around the shallow areas, like you say, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and possibly you can, you know, when you can see a pike and you put a bait in front of it, how many times in off-coloured water must there be pike around your bait and you don't even realise yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the advantage with clear water is you can at least get that reaction mm. and say, well, I put a bait in front of it, don't want to feed, he's probably eaten anyway. I mean, I've seen them here before when they are eating some of the big trout, sort of four pound plus, they've got it in the mouth and they've got it in the mouth for a few days. And what they're actually doing is, because it's such a big bait, they've got it down on them and they basically sort of digest <laughs> Oh, part of it, and then they just keep working it down. <laughs> really? That's what they do, yeah? yeah. And that's because you, if you're doing fishery management, you get to see that, which yeah, exactly. normal anglers don't get to see it. I mean, I've seen it before, when you can, you can see, like, I don't know, half a trout here in its head is pretty much digested. Oh, I see. Its tail and back end of it is pretty much perfect, and that's what it's been doing, because it's just been sitting on it and just slowly working it down its throat. That makes sense, that does make sense. Use 
sardines, but don't be afraid to use a big bait for a big pike. Music to the ears, I've got another small one on. I'm casting across the wind, let the wind do the work with the float. It's not a big fish, but it's another one for us to uh, measure up here. Just hope it doesn't come off, otherwise I feel a bit dumb. Like that. <laughs> that's where you get messing around with the camera and that's what's left of my, of my sardine. Still, you can, it was one on there, trust me. And there's the cut marks, you can see the little slash marks on the bait. And of course, it's my last bait. Lovely, but it's still going out there just in case. You got a take? Well guys, I just lost that fish. I chucked out a mashed up sardine and <laughs> we've had a double whammy. Nathan's hooked up a pike, he hasn't struck it yet, he's taking his bait, he's taking like a two pound trout and I think I've got to take on this, either that or the weed is making the float put under. But it looks like a double, double hook up with a bit of luck. Definitely a take, is that Nathan? Yeah. My God, you want to see the size of the bait this man's using? And over here, I think, I think I might have had a pick up on mine, I'm not sure. I'm searching for the float. There's my float. Oh no, maybe mine's dropped it. Looks like the wind's just, wind's just, I think the wind's just dragging it around like that. But Nathan is the one to watch because that, that bait, I mean, that's, a, that's an animal bait. That's a, that's a bigger bait as I've seen. Did he drop it? Yeah, I'll fish on here, Nathan. Oh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong zoom. I must have messed around with this one, guys. This is a better fish. This feels decent one, Nathan. Let me know if you hook yours up as well. We'll get both together. That last one I had was about four pounds of spat the bait. It's not a monster this one, but it feels like a decent fish. I think it's more than four pounds. You on? Double whammy of pike, folks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm getting, I'm getting stripped out. I don't know if you guys can see over there, but Nathan's got a fish on as well. Let me know if it's a real bigger, Nathan. All right, I'll try and get mine in. Oh, what? I'll get it from this side. Mine's gonna have to take second place. Oh, Jesus. How big is that? Is he in? It's a good double. I'll be around in a second, see if I can get my one as well. Oh, man. Just come on, just come on. Mine's away as well. I'll tell you what guys, we've been put off by the floods for like seven weeks. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Mostly I want to go and see Nathan's fish because I've picked it some bit toasty. Oh, what? Jesus Christ. Which one about it? Double as well. Yeah. Holy cow. It's a, it's a crocodile. <laughs> it's a crocodile. I thought it was about nine pounds. No. I'm going to try and get the camera down for the uh, YouTube guys. I don't want to lose this fish. Oh, that's as good as I'm not going to mess with it. Get away from the... Oh, there. It's a few, it's a few. It's a clock. Oh, it's a clock. 
<laughs> this could be two of the biggest pipes we've seen on Totally Awesome called together, guys. Well, I'm not a million miles off of 18, I'd say, Nathan. I reckon I'm close to 18, 20. Oh. <laughs> silly. Okay. It's just silly, people. It's silly. Look at the size of this. I'm going to switch the camera off and I'm going to run around, see if we can get sorted out and show you them both together. This is what you two call totally awesome fishing, Nathan. Oh, it's a nice price of pike in there. £20.6 and £18.14. Oh my god. My good god. Got two peas in the pod. Aren't they? Real chop. Both hooked at the same time. Exactly, are. Yeah. Let's get them on the mat. £20.6 yeah. and £18.14. It's not often you see two like that, monstrous together. You can't carry them. Do you realise you're carrying the British record in weight there, Nathan? <laughs> Got 40 pounds. That one's mine anyway. I don't care which one's mine, they're both oh. lunkers. Beautiful. Absolute stunker. Let's get my camera set up. I'll come in the side of you. I'll tell you what, all that winter weighted and 20 pounds still looks like. 30 pounds to me, let me get on really properly. That's the best thing of cold weather piking, as you know, the fish are gonna, oh man. It's the <laughs> oh God almighty. It's a first for the totally awesome fishing show. I've forgotten the weights already at my age. 18, 14. 18, 14, man. The one you're older, 20 pounds six. 20 pounds six, and you saw on camera guys, I said, oh, it's not that beast, it's about nine pounds. <laughs> what a beauty. Cracking fish. Now, we've got to get a couple of steels to these two. Definitely the 20 pound six. They're almost the same length. Just fatter, isn't it? They're just fatter. You've got wet hands, Nathan, like, you do them one by one. This one here. That's 1814, yeah. And that's 30, 36 inches. Yeah. Oh, the pin's back, yeah. And 19 inches round. Okay. And this one. Is I only bought three bases. 39. 39 inches. Yeah. It's just a point of interest, you know. Just around the fattest gut piece, just barely. Just get some sort of measure on it. 19 off. 19 again. Right, getting back in the water. That is an incredible catch. We've got the boots as well. Well, the bait seemed to work there, Nathan, no question of that. And yes, it's starting to rain yet again. I do not care, apart from the fact Mike might when he gets the camera back and it's wet and doesn't work for his pike. <laughs> Can let him recover there a minute, Nathan, yeah? Yeah, I'll just let him pull Or should they be okay in the cold weather? I just want to give him a quick weigh again, just to make sure on them weights. 19 too. So second way in the proper way because we we're in a panic. So we've got a 19-2 on it. Cracking fast. Beauty. Wants to go, doesn't it? It's amazing how they don't look very big in the water, isn't it? Quick one on the other one as well. 20 pound 10. 20 pound 10? 20 pound 10, yeah. So they both it's they both were bigger than we weighed in the first place in a panic. Yep. Away goes the croc. Yeah, he's fine. You can just see that head no, want to go already, don't they? Well done Nathan. Yes. You're extremely lucky for me when it comes oh, to pike fishing. <laughs> extremely lucky. Brilliant.
Well guys, that was about the most fantastic fishing session that I've had this winter, because it's been diabolical. I mean, for the totally awesome fishing crew to get two fish, just over 20, just under 20, well good job we weighed them second time round. And we weighed them the second time round, got Nathan to do that. We wanted to know exactly those weights perfectly, because we rushed it first time, we are so pumped up with adrenaline. Get them exactly right, so they see if we can get these weight for length measurements. Just see how they pan out. I don't believe they work at all. In fact, I don't even think they're close. Maybe for one particular species, when that formula was formulated, I suppose, that particular species, maybe you can get 10% either side. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but I'll tell you what's really interesting. Even if it doesn't matter, it doesn't really have anything to do because here in England, we weigh all our fish, don't we? Most of the time we weigh our fish and you either keep them if they're sea fish and eat them or if they're freshwater fish, you let them go. But a lot of foreign countries just go by measurements, centimeters or inches, and just measure the total length of the fish. Never mind about the girth and times this and square that, just the length of the fish. And you know, that seems to me a good way if you don't want to weigh a fish, is, you know, you caught a, a 29 inch pike or a 30 inch pike, whatever, is, yeah, or a barbel or a chub or a cup. Does it matter? It doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, I'm gonna check these formulas out. Let's get over to the office side of things and see exactly what some of these weights panned out at. Okay, people, just to give you an idea, the formula, for working out weight for length measurements, which give you, allegedly, an accurate weight of that fish, give or take 10%, is to measure with a tape measure from the tip of the snout to the fork of the tail. I'm reading this, this is how it comes up. You then get the square of the girth times the length and divide that by 800. <laughs> get yourself one of these. We can work it out. I'm going to do this on one fish. Now, here are some fish I had other than those pike, right? So I've got one, two, three different species I've worked this out on, okay? So, Peter Arler over at Aldermaster Mill on the River Kennet, he caught, when I was making a the film there, he caught a barbel that we weighed of five pound, six ounces. It was 24 inches long. It had a 13 and a half inch girth. Let me just work it out on the calculator and we'll see if the formula comes up with the same weight. Okay, here we go guys. There's my little scrap of paper. So we know, we know the, that that barbel weighed five pounds, six ounces. So to get the square of the fish, okay, on its girth, which is 13 and a half inches, that's 13.5 times 13.5 then times the length, which was 24 inches. 24 inches and divide that by 800. Divided by 800. The moment of truth. Now, the fish weighed on the scales five pounds, six ounces. Here, if you can see that, it's got 5.46. Now, obviously I've done this on a few barbel, and barbel might be just symmetrically the shape that's right for this particular set of scales. Because don't forget, I believe it originated in America, so it would be from an American species that they actually came up with this formula. So that one, give or take 10%, you know, is about right. It's about right, it's about close. But as soon as you go to species like carp, I've got here, I've got a carp of eight pounds, six ounces weighed. That was 16 inches girth. So that's 16 times 16 times the length of 23 inches, 23 inches, divided by 800. And the formula says, oh, the fish weighed 7.36 pounds. Uh, sorry, it's totally out. We weighed the fish accurately, it weighed eight pounds, six ounces. So there you have it, that formula, totally out on the weight of a carp. So you can see that it doesn't work on carp, but it appears it's quite close on a barbel. We'll try another carp. This one was 14 inches girth, so you go 14 times 14, you square it, times the length, which in this case was 21 inches, divide that by 800, and that gives us a weight of five pounds, or 5.14 pounds. Well, that can't be right, can it? Because down here, we weighed the fish, and the fish weighed 
six pounds three ounces so as you can see it's really sort of not even close however let's move ahead because we've now got the pike that we did okay now I did one two three four pike I've done four pike for you that we measured from that fantastic totally awesome days fishing my god I can't believe those two huge fish I had with Nathan really good let's start on the small one first small one we weighed at four pounds two ounces so we know what it weighs it's 9.5 inches girth times 9.5 times the actual length of it which we taped at 23 inches divided by this dreaded 800 to give you the formula and it says that fish weighed 2.59 pounds that's offensive we weighed that fish it weighed four pounds two ounces so it appears on a longer thinner fish haha <laughs> it's nowhere near it it's nowhere near it on the measurements i'm going to do you another one won't tell you the weight first 13.5 sorry 13 times 13 right that's the girth squared times the length which was 26.5 inches divided by 800 our formula says that pike weighed 5.59 pounds terribly sorry but we weigh it at six pounds two ounces now if you use that weight for length formula and say you're trying to get a specimen two pound roach <laughs> you ain't gonna be a happy bunny are you really let's face it you're not gonna be pleased that you think oh, i don't weigh that fish it looks about two pounds i'll use that weight for length formula and it comes out at one pound 14 ounces you would be pig sick wouldn't you i know i would be Let's do the big boys. And remember, we weigh these fish the second time to get an absolute accurate weighing on. Nathan did it, he's far, far more accurate a weigh than I am. Right, Nathan's fish, 19 inches girth, squared, times the length, 36 inches, a long pike, divided by 800, it comes to, well, sorry, Nathan, it says your fish only weighed 16.24 pounds. Oh dear. <laughs> you must have use those scales. No. I've got to do mine now because we weighed it and we got 20 pound 10 ounces Nathan got on that. So let's look because this one definitely, definitely was a little bit bigger. And I noticed when Nathan did it, he actually had it quite tight on the girth. You know, you can lose a half inch or even an inch depending on how tight you pull that tape. This is all interesting stuff. 19.5 girth squared. So you times 19.5 again. Then you times the length, which in this case was, my God, 39 inches long times eight uh, divided by i apologize 800 and it says my fish weight 18 and a half pounds that's not right that's not very nice is it i'm not using that formula am i because i know that the fish weigh 20 pounds 10 ounces so there you have it that's three different species one two three four five six seven different formulas i've worked on none of them by the first one was really really close Barbell, yes, symmetrically, that must work very close for the weight for length. But let's face it, not all fish are the shape streamlined like barbell and let's say bonefish. Those two probably might be accurate. So I've had a fantastic days fishing, but I just want to run one more little experiment past you, just for a bit of fun. Now then, I have just stolen, begged, borrowed, nicked my wife's best kitchen scales. She doesn't know that. Little experiment for you. I've got four different scales. I've got her kitchen scales, which are, one assumes are very accurate. At least they've got big enough measurements I can read them. I'm going to weigh a bunch of leads in there in a plastic bag. We're going to write the weights down and then I'm going to test my own three sets of old fishing scales. One's Mike's modern scales, digitals. The other two are both spring balance. One's a dial, one's tubular. So three different types of scales, including these. Let's just see if they match up because we know absolutely that the weight for length measurements aren't accurate and that's over different species. Let's just check this out. You have to zero these the same as you have to zero your own fishing scales. So let's just zone these in and get them on zero first. Okay, there we go. We can see the dial there. There's the needle. I'll just push the top. You can see the needle moving. Now what we're going to do is just rotate the bottom here, forget which way it goes, and we're going to bring it back to, there we go, zero pounds. So it's absolutely exactly or as precisely as I can get it, there, so I'm totally on zero. Now into that, I'm gonna place in a plastic bag, a bag of heavy boat fishing leads. Don't tell her if I break them, please, guys. 
Oh dear. Off the scale. No, I'm going to turn that gently around. I won't move a thing. There we go. Uh, where's those needles? That is. He says get the spectrum. Exactly. Have a look at this. So we all know what we're doing. 7 pounds 8 ounces. So there's exactly 7 pounds 8 ounces of lead in that plastic bag. Now I'm going to zero the three sets of scales and see if we can all come up with the same weight. So I know the scales are then accurate. Okay, first up for testing, my trusty old Avon dial scales. That's a dial that goes round and round and round and it's basically a spring balance. So, specs on. Very interesting this. Now here, at the back, in case these youngsters don't know, you have a little adjusting wheel, so you can actually zone that back, trim it back to zero, and obviously if you're weighing a fish with a bag, you have to take into account of the bag. And I know some guys that have zeroed the bag, and thought, oh, better soak it in the water, guys, to look after Mr. Fishy Wishy. Soak it in the water, gain about a pound of water weight, hang it out and go, oh, look at that, the fish weighs 53 pounds, nine ounces. Uh, no, it's a wet one, so I know all the tricks. There we go, it's on zero. Assuming they don't break, let's just see if we get to six, seven. Oh, this one says seven pounds before I drop it on my toe, seven pounds four ounces, seven and a quarter. Now, I've no way of knowing which of these scales are accurate. The wife's kitchen scales one assumes are accurate because they're used for cooking, but are they? These actually weigh a quarter of a pound under the wife's one assumes accurate kitchen scales. Next scales, let's use the spring balance, tubular. Okay guys, these are regular tubular spring balance. Used to use them, probably superseded these dial scales. They've got an adjustment screw at the top here. So as the balance is there, you can bring up, let's turn it the right way, here until you get the line right on the zero. Then we hook on our little bag of goodies here, and the spring, if you can see that, if you can see that there, just registers in lines in quarter pound segments. This is so close to tearing and dropping on my toe. Oh, now that's interesting. Now that's seven and a half, obviously it's halfway through. That surprises me, that actually weighs seven pound four ounces. So it would appear the Weiss kitchen scales are out the tubular balance and the Avon dial scales weigh the same. I'll write it down, 7-4. But what will Mr. Pullen Jr.'s, a la Mike Pullen's digital modern scales, say when we hang them up? Let's zero them. I bet his scales weigh more, but he's got them fixed. Oh, please don't tear, please don't tear. <laughs> yes, I'm weighing my fish on mate scales. We're well, gonna press hold there. Oh, I've deleted it. Oh my god. That was, let me see again. That's funny. Oh my god, I've got to get these scales. Seven pounds, six ounces. Hey Mike, how come you're weighing all your fish on these scales? So the digital scales, there you go, I don't know if you see that guys, weigh seven pounds, six ounces. The kitchen scales, which I thought were accurate, seven pounds, eight ounces, and the two spring balance, it's funny they're both the same, but they're both spring balances, isn't it? Seven pounds four. Do you know what? I tend to believe those spring balances are accurate, and I now tend to believe I'm weighing all my fish on Mike's digital scales, because they've got an extra two ounces in there. Oh! So there you have it guys. I hope that's been an informative, totally awesome fishing show video for you. You've actually got some good tips in there. You've seen some good fishing. You've seen two monster pike come out. Whoa, I enjoyed that very much. That's a little shorty session. And you've got something to chew over, something to think about. Weight for length formulas or accurate weights on spring balances and digital balances, but are they actually accurate? Who's going to know? Who's going to care? Even if you measure the length of the fish, do you care? I'm just saying they're all different. Use whichever one you want. Have a totally awesome time. And remember, you get the best information off the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. See you next time, guys. Don't tell her about the kitchen scales. I think they're broken.